Restriction enzyme digestion is a fast and inexpensive way to gather broad sequence information about plasma DNA. A restriction digest can give a generalized, bird's eye, or macroscopic view of the entire plasmid. It can also reveal useful information, like the purity and conformation of a plasmid, which is important for downstream applications, like transfection. For example, supercoiled DNA has higher transfection efficiency than nicked DNA. While in theory and in textbooks, restriction digestion is straightforward, interpreting the results of a digest in practice is easier said than done. In this video, we will digest a plasmid of known identity with restriction enzymes, run the products on an agarose gel, and analyze the results. We'll focus on identifying the bands produced under different conditions and use the results to make conclusions about the plasmid. Now, let's start our analysis. The first thing you should do is draw out your expected results. While this step may seem unnecessary, it's good practice and it will make your analysis go a lot faster. In this exercise, we would like to verify the identity of a plasmid we received from AdGene. We'll digest the 7.5 kilobase pair plasmid individually with either AGE1 or XBA1, which are both single cutters, and then with AGE1 and XBA1 together. We'll also digest the plasmid with ECHOR1, which has two recognition sites in the plasmid. So let's draw out the expected results. Here's our gel. Lane 1 is the size marker, often referred to as the ladder. Lane 2 will be the undigested control. Because this plasmid is circular, the migration pattern of the undigested control diverges a bit from the migration pattern of the latter, which was made with linear DNA. The uncut plasmid typically adopts a supercoiled conformation. That's because these plasmids were isolated from bacteria, and supercoiled is the native conformation of plasmids in vivo because it's compact. A compact conformation allows the plasmid to migrate through the gel at a faster rate than its linear equivalent. This is because it experiences the same amount of electromotive force, but less resistance due to friction. As a result, it runs a little smaller than the equivalently sized band on the latter. This plasmid is 7.5 kilobases. So let's draw the supercoiled band right below the 7.5 kilobase pair mark. Another conformation of uncut plasmid DNA is nicked. DNA can be nicked naturally in vivo through the activity of topoisomerases. DNA can also get nicked during purification if the conditions are harsh. So it's common to see nicked DNA in your uncut control. When one strand of the DNA is nicked, supercoiling is released. So the conformation of nicked DNA resembles a floppy hula hoop or a hair tie, making it relatively large. In fact, nicked DNA is so big that as it's migrating through the gel, it experiences greater resistance due to friction than even the linear DNA, which can be more flexible than the nicked. Consequently, nicked DNA runs a little higher than the equivalently sized band on the latter. Since we're still talking about a 7.5 kilobase pair plasmid, let's draw the nicked DNA a little above the 7.5 kb mark. Now that we've drawn our control, let's move on to our digestions. Lane 3 is the AGE1 digestion, which yields a single product. And because it's linear, its migration is consistent with the marker. So we expect to see a band at the 7.5 kb mark. Lane 4 is the XBA1 digestion. Just like AGE1, it yields a single linear 7.5 kb band. So we expect to see a band in the same 7.5 kb spot. Lane 5 is the double AGE1 XBA1 digest. According to our map, we would expect two products, a 7.2 kb band and a 300 base pair band. Since these two fragments appear in a 1 to 1 molar ratio, we know the 7.2 kb band will be 24 times brighter than the 300 base pair band because it is 24 times as large. This means that if we don't have a bright enough 7.2 kb band, we might not even see the 300 base pair band. Lane 6 is the Echo R1 digest. Echo R1 cuts in two places, so we expect two products, a 5.4 kb band and a 2.1 kb band. Okay, this picture looks complete. Let's run our experiment and see our results. Run your gel long enough to get good separation of the bands. Don't rush it.
Now that we've run our digestion, let's go through each lane and compare our experimental data with our expected results. We've marked the latter with the sizes of the markers. Lane 2, the uncut negative control. We expect to see a supercoiled band and a nicked band, and that's what we see here. As expected, the supercoiled runs a little faster than the 7.5 kb band, and the nicked runs a little slower than the 7.5 kb band. Based on the relative intensities of these two bands, we can tell that the majority of our DNA is in the supercoiled conformation. Also, based on the sharpness of the bands and the lack of smear, we can deduce that we have a clean DNA prep. Lanes 3 and 4 are the AGE1 and XBA1 single digests, where we expect a single 7.5 kb band, and possibly some of the uncut fragments. In each lane, we do see a linear 7.5 kb band. Lane 5 is the AGE1 XBA1 double digest, where we expect two digestion products. We can identify the 7.2 kb band clearly. Since this is a new band, we know it must be the 7.2 kb digestion product. Looking for the 300 base pair band, we find that it's visible but faint. From our earlier calculations, we expect this band to be 24 times less intense than the 7.2 kb band, so the band intensity is not surprising. Lane 6 is the ECHOR1 digest. Again, we see two new digestion products in this lane relative to the negative control lane. Notice we do not see any residual nicked or supercoiled bands, which indicates that the reaction was run to completion. Overall, our gel looks close to the expected results, and we don't see any bands that we can explain. This indicates that the plasmid we've isolated is most likely the plasmid we think it is. I hope this video helps you set up and analyze your next diagnostic digest. This was just one example of how restriction digests can be useful. Other diagnostic digests, like DNA fingerprinting, follow these same principles and can be used to map plasmids or even entire genomes in more detail. Feel free to share your comments at the bottom of the page. If you like this video, check out our other videos at adgene.org slash protocols. Adgene, a better way to share science.